this right now. Amen. Ooh. Amen. The blessing is that we serve a right now God. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We serve a yes, indeed. Right now, God. Woo. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm. My cup already spilling. I'm already spilling my cup. <laughs> I, I just I need a right now, God. And he shows up right on time. Amen. Amen. He shows Amen. up right Amen. on time. Because he's an on time God. Don't start nothing, uh, Pastor Green. Ooh, I'm trying to start. Oh, <laughs> uh, you go, you go get Elder Rush going, and it's I'm going to be all. <laughs> I'm trying to start. <laughs> I, I looked at her son. I thought she was headed over the wall. I said, "No, Jesus, she about to she about to take a leap, Jesus." <laughs> But the, the angels had her though. The angels had her. They weren't gonna Amen. let her leave. Amen. Yes, yeah, Amen. Amen. There's a song they sung in the old apostolic churches. He won't let you what? Fall. Oh. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. He won't let you fall. Whew. Jesus. I, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, y'all. I'm coming back around the corner. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. When I think about the goodness. Oh, God, here we go. Oh, <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> oh. Ooh. 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 thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Joanne, man. Joanne, I'm going to hand off to you, darling. I, I, I'm just going to shut my mouth. I, I'm, I'm going on mute, but I, I'm going to hand off. Good evening to everyone. This is Burning Bush Worship Center. This is our Bible study evening. We thank God for our Pastor Green and for his lovely wife, Zicky. Talking about songs, there's a song that says, It's a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne, Lord Jesus, to be mm -hmm. called into your presence as your own. Lord, we Amen. give you honor. We give you glory on this day. We thank you, Lord, for knowing you as our Savior, as our Deliverer, as our Keeper. We thank you, Lord, for Pastor Green and Sister Vicki. We thank you for Elder Deborah and her husband, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Tim and his wife and for Pastor Karen and Elder Mo, Lord. We thank you for all the pastoral staff that you have given us at Burning Bush Worship Center. And right now, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would create in each of us clean hearts, renew your spirit within us, Lord. Teach us, guide us, and direct us on this evening as we study your word and as we draw nearer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oof. Let's get it started Amen. right. <laughs> I had to go on mute because I, oh, my mule, my, my mule, my mule. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just bless your name. We just magnify you, God. We thank you for every individual online, every individual watching today and in the future. Lord, we just bless right now as we go back and re reflect on, on your word on Sunday, God. Bless the hearts and minds as they give their reflection in Jesus' name. Take it, take it, Pastor Stanley. Get, get it out of my hands. Get it out of my hands. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It, it's a good thing to be happy that we made it to the mid of the, the middle of the week. We made it to Wednesday. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They, they said Wednesday. The if you can get through Wednesday, you can make it through the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, it's, it's great to be online with you guys. I missed you guys last week. Um, mm -hmm. wasn't feeling well, but I'm back on this week. Um, Amen. Uh, Amen. We want to reflect on uh, the message that was uh, preached on Sunday uh, by Pastor Green. Um, he was coming from Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 12, going to 14, right, Doc? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Would uh, somebody read that for me, or you guys want me to read it since I'm I played hooky last week? You go ahead. 
I have it. Oh, you got it? Okay, first lady. So I'm coming out of the NLT. NLT, okay. And it's Colossians 3, 12 through 4. Topic being, it's an inside job. Since God chose you to be the holy people whom he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, mm. kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. You must make allowance for each other's faults mm. and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And the most important piece of clothing you must wear is love. Love is what binds us all together in perfect harmony. Amen. 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 Awesome. And I think it was a uh, week before last, Wednesday before last, we were talking about uh, uh, milk versus meat. And as I was reading through this scripture, this scripture ain't for the uh, for the for the new the new Christian coming in. This is not for them. This this gonna take some time. It's gonna take a mature Christian to uh, to be able to uh, forgive somebody who's doing who has done them wrong. You know. Um, this takes some time for us with some meat. What are you yeah. talking about? Hey, so that's what I mean. <laughs> this this ain't for the this ain't for the babies. This <laughs> takes some time for us with the meat. Exactly. <laughs> this, this is Jesus. gonna take some work. This is this is not for children. Um, but, but yeah, this this was this was a great great scripture to pull from it. We just bless God and thank God for uh, Pastor Green for for taking us there. In so many words, he was telling us to grow up. <laughs> you know, that's what I got from it. Exactly. Grow up. You know. Yeah. Uh, was yeah. there anybody else? I'm pretty sure everybody on the line got something from it. Can you tell me what you got from it that you were able to take through the week? Well, since I, I read this thing and um we 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 read this so much, we've even discussed this so many times. Yes, and the must part, first of all, let's start with this must thing, <laughs> you know, um, because we must grow up. I mean, I get that, you know. So I do feel you on your take on what you got out of it, because that's exactly what the Lord is telling us, we must grow up. Yes, and um, the thing that, that I really love discussing because it hinders a lot of our people in coming into the house of the Lord is tradition. Yes, um, I love it, love it, love it. When that is broken down to we so caught up as Christians on what we have on the outside mm -hmm. and not concerned with what's on the inside of a person. Mm -hmm. And we can be shot with diamonds, pearls, stilettos, fur, <laughs> all of that on the outside, but be nasty as I don't know what on the inside. Yes, ma'am. Amen. We so quick <laughs> to judge other people, you know, if they make a mistake, yes. oh, I believe she came up, in, oh, I don't believe she came up in here, and, and we know she was at yeah. the club, still smelling like liquor this morning. Mm -hmm. So quick to judge other people for what their shortcomings are. When that's a shortcoming right there, we got for judging somebody. Yes, so yes. I, really exactly. appreciate, I really appreciate the fact that when we talk about tradition, because in this new day, I think that should be in the forefront of all of us Christian minds, because a lot of people, a lot, and I mean a lot, the first thing you ask when you ask them about coming to the church, first thing they want to know, what should we wear? Do we have to wear this? Do we have to wear that? Then you go on in the conversation, you'll find out where the reason why I left so-and-so church, because the people were so nasty. You know, yes. I sat in this seat and the usher got pissed off or one of the members got pissed off because that's their regular seat. I mean, just a bunch of foolishness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we must grow up from the foolishness and stop being so apt to going on traditional rules and let us go like, be like Christ. We should follow Christ, not the rules of the world, but the the rules of Christ, because if we exercise the fruit of the spirit, then we'll become like Christ's light. And I think we as Christians, we need to focus more on exercising the fruit 
rather than exercising all them um, spurs and pistols out there that we ain't got no business even trying to judge, you know, and help one another and help those who are coming in, help those babies coming in and help them understand. It ain't about that out appearance, it's that inner appearance because at the end of the day, God going to take care of all of us anyway. That's his job. Our job is to get them in there. His job is to save us and keep us in. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. We know, we know who's going to preach next Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I do believe we stepped the, got one for <laughs> Oh, Sister Vicky. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I agree. I agree. <laughs> That's a real touchy subject with me because yes, I, I definitely... We can tell. We too caught up on the wrong crap, you know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So, and it's just it's, it's mind boggling. It, it almost would make you want to slap somebody when you see they being ignorant to somebody who's coming in the house to serve the Lord. Ain't nobody come to see you. That's you know, right. they come up here to see, you know, serve the Lord. They trying to get closer to God. And we around here looking at foolishness, you mm -hmm. know, just like Pharisees. Oh, I'm the, I'm the junk. You know, I got this, I got that. And you ain't got nothing but a bad soul. Mm -hmm. And then talking about tradition and talking about tradition, my experience, I'm going to just say this short. And it made me cry because what I was seeking was God, I was seeking Jesus mm -hmm. to forgive me. And I entered into this church and I was pregnant, unwed. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the deacon came over to me and told me that I shouldn't be there mm. because I was oh, unwed and pregnant. Wow. Mm. And I should leave. And it made me cry all the way out of that church. Wow. And I felt some type of way. And I felt mm -hmm. like just cursing everybody out in that church, but I didn't. I kept my peace. I cried and I left. Mm -hmm. But wow, that's just that's just it. And ever since, I mean, for a long time, it took me a while to step back into another church. And then mm -hmm. my first, then the first time I stepped back in after years was into the Rosa Sharon, Rosa Sharon, I think it was Rosa Sharon, and that's when I. I did. I, they accepted me for who I was and for what had happened to me being was being pregnant and unwed. So that's my experience. Amen. 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 I like to glad um, you succeeded. I like to piggyback off of what Belinda just said because I went through the same thing when I was pregnant with my first child, I had two of the mothers of the church to mm. tell me to go home and tell my mama not to send me to church anymore. In that mm. Wow. And anybody that know my mama knew that my mama did not play. And my mama sure called them on the phone and asked them, where should she be? That's the mm. best place for her. And that's why I Amen. her to church. That's where she needs to be in church. And instead of you guys telling her that she shouldn't be there, you should be helping her, guiding her, and instructing her. But uh, know this for sure. Don't say nothing else to my daughter. She's where <laughs> she should be. And the message Sunday just brought a lot out for me in that we are so stuck on traditions and man-made rules because they ain't all that stuff ain't in the bible about what yeah. you can and cannot do and i heard this woman um preaching during the week and she said well she wasn't preaching she was just kind of speaking to women because it was a women's conference and she said a lot of us forget where we came from or we forget mm -hmm. that we were raised in the church. Those of us who were raised in the church, 
we know the different things, but people who are coming in, some of them never knew anything about church and we're so quick to run and tell them, mm -hmm. no, you can't do that. You can't come in here just like that. And you can't mm -hmm. come talking like that, that they don't know. And instead of going to them and telling them the things of the Bible, mm -hmm. not the things that we think uh, you should or shouldn't do, but instead of teaching them God's word and this is God's way and this is what God says, mm -hmm. we rather do it the other way. So I, I think the message was very good that we need to get off tradition mm -hmm. and just follow the word and do what God says to do and show kindness and love to one another and learn to forgive, which, you know, that for me, it, it, yeah, it takes a little bit of time. I ain't going to say it's always instant, <laughs> but, you know, just something I'm, I'm still working on with some people. I just don't, you know, jump right in and say, okay, yeah, I forgive you. No, I, I don't do that mm -hmm. all the time. But I think that the message was to show us, you know, bring back to our remembrance, you know, bring us back to where we were when we first received Christ, you know, mm -hmm. when we were first yeah. introduced to Christ and the things that we had to learn. And sometimes we get so saved that, you know, we know it, but we just put it behind us because we ain't got to go there no more. And those, <laughs> those, those, those scriptures are in the words, there for a reason. I mean, we have to use it all the time, not just when we feel like it or when it suits us best. So, you know, I just feel like it was a time of reflection. It was very personal, you know, for everybody to just reflect on yourself. What is it that you can do or change about yourself mm -hmm. to be more like Christ and to follow the word more? I, I, yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent comment. I wanted to just mention uh, one of the things that's really I guess a key for me is that we often think too highly of ourselves and that we feel oh. like ourselves can achieve this place where forgiveness happens. God created us to be able to be supernatural. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do anything to be natural. We were born that way. Amen. But we have to do something to become supernatural to achieve those things which are achievable outside of the natural. Amen. And I think too many times we try to achieve supernatural things walking in our natural. Uh, I, I, I owned a car. Vicky hated my car, but I love my little sports car. I just love my little sports car. <laughs> Going through midlife things, it was a sports car. But but one of the things about that car was it had the ability to detect the type of surface you were driving on. <laughs> so whenever you would hit a wet surface where there was a possibility for you to skid or slide or hydroplane, it would, it would change its traction. The okay. wheels would actually do something different to grip the road in a different way. The <laughs> suspension would adjust to the terrain. And one of the things that we in the church world have a, sometimes an issue with doing is adjusting to the terrain. Okay. When you need to be supernatural, we get caught in the natural and we don't make an adjustment mm. or it takes more time. You know what I mean? Something that slipped out, came out, came up. You know what I mean? Your eyes done roll, you done sucked. Something done happened and during that transition. But the beautiful thing about it is God is saying, if, if you walk in the spirit, this is mm -hmm. one of my scriptures I'm going to use tonight about this valley that we're going to talk about, that, that you won't um, be doing those things which are what? Of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to quickly make the transition when we hit that terrain that requires a supernatural application. No, no you pissed me off and you... And you you made me mad. Naturally, I don't want anything to do with you. Right. But supernaturally, I'm going to forgive you. Mm. Because I'm walking in the spirit. And it's the spirit within me that takes me to that place of forgiveness. Not my intellect, 
not just because I want them or because I know it's the right thing to do. My spirit has got to be in tune with forgiveness in order to forgive. Amen. 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 Go ahead. No, I just like the title itself. It's, it says it's an inside job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She changes us from the inside out. But, but the thing is, he told us to clothe ourselves mm -hmm. in these things. So you, you know, you get dressed every morning, but this is a spiritual outfit. Amen. And, uh, and that, like Vicky said, and everybody else said, for so long and too long, we looked at people, what they're wearing. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that man looks at the outward, but God looks on the heart. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why he was able to say that David was a man out of his own heart. Mm -hmm. Even with all his mess, God was yeah. able to say that about David. And that's what he says about us. So uh, it, uh, this scripture is telling us that we need to love each other like that, mm -hmm. regardless. I might not like everything you do. You might not like everything I do. I might be a little, uh, what you call it? They, they say I don't have no filter. But anyway, <laughs> I think I got a little filter. But anyway, <laughs> you might not I don't. me for not having a filter. But I thank God. You know, he made me. He knew who I am. He knows mm -hmm. my heart. <laughs> <laughs> God's still working with me on my filter. Sorry. But, 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 but the, the thing is, none of us have one. No. Our, our flesh, the, the components of our flesh is filterless. Right. You know what I mean? And mm. the only thing that can be the filter for us is Christ oh, in us. Mm -hmm. The hope of glory. I mean, it's, it, it, it said that you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh is my flesh going to cuss you out. That's oh, yeah. what my flesh is going to do. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm just saying. And the only yeah. thing going to keep me from doing it is if I walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. If I cross the street on Amen. the spirit side, if you catch me on the flesh side, you might catch Robert. You know what I mean? And now you catch me on the spirit side, Pastor Green may raise up and be able to, but, but if you keep, you now know what I'm saying. Right. But, but it, it, it's a natural place to be. Mm -hmm. And and that's the, the thing that I think that we consider supernatural beyond us, like Twilight Zone kind of stuff, Star Trek. No, mm -hmm. supernatural is how we were designed. Mm -hmm. We are a spiritual being yeah. in, in a body of flesh. Uh, a, a upcoming ser a sermon God gave me was about, he blew it, so we won't blow it. Mm -hmm. now, it's, it's coming soon to a, a pulpit near you, but <laughs> he blew it, <laughs> so we won't blow it. I'm just saying, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't blow into monkeys, orangutans, dogs, and cats. They breathe, mm -hmm. but he blew into us, so we won't blow it. Amen. So I we agree. are a spiritual being. You know what I mean? But we, when we operate in the flesh, we're going to do the things that the flesh do. No, you ain't going to have no filter in the flesh. You know, and if you don't transform or cross over into the spirit. Mm -hmm. You're going to be filterless. Mm -hmm. But in the spirit, we're going to be fruitful. Amen. Awesome. You know what? What's what's cool about it is um running into people that you see in church, and you you have this pedestal in your brain, and you put them on a high pedestal, and you say, "Oh, well, they're this," but then like they might do something and curse, and you're like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> <laughs> So you, you you got a point where you don't have a filter. Now, that might be not considered to be Christ-like, but at the same time, it shows me your human side because sometimes you can be too super. You can be too super. And when I see that you got some natural with you, it kind of takes the weight off of me to always try to be perfect. And I've run into this at, I ain't gonna say well, I will say I've seen it at Burning Bush. I've seen it at the church that I came from. And people that were that I thought in my mind was so seasoned that they didn't do anything wrong. And then they might do something. And I'm like, wait a minute, you are human. And they take the weight off me. And you know, as young people, the younger people can see through stuff now. And they'll ask you a question. Like people of a certain age might hold back on a question. 
but the babies will come up and ask you. Like for instance, I had several children at Burning Bush and say, you in a wheelchair? And I'm like, yeah. And then they think that I can't do nothing. But then when they see me doing a bunch of stuff, it's like, oh, but that child part of us needs to be seen because that's the part that ain't going to do everything right. And as me, as a Christian, I need to know that you don't do everything right. I need to know that you don't always say the right words because through my Monday through Friday, I don't always say the right words, but it takes a weight off me to always try to do things the right way, perfect, 1000% perfect, knowing that there was only one Jesus who did everything perfect, you know? Now I can only speak for me. I need to see that people are human. I don't want to see robots walking around, you know? So <laughs> if, if you do something that's out of pocket and I know that Christ still loved you the way he loved me, but at the same time, I'm, I'm seeing an example to say, this person don't always do it right, but God still loves them. So it takes a weight off of my shoulders to say, hey, I didn't do, I didn't say everything right that I was supposed to say. But if Christ still loved them and he don't start pouring out his blessings and his favor on them, then he won't stop pouring out his blessings and favor on me. Amen. Wow. I, I see a raised hand. Amen. Tiffany, you raise your hand. Uh, you're on mute if you're speaking, Tiffany. I see a raised hand. I, I guess you're... Sorry, I didn't mean to raise my hand. Oh, okay. I, I just saw it on there. No worries. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 you know, we have to clothe ourselves, you know what I mean? And uh, in order to, to, to clothe, you have to have a wardrobe. And you can't clothe yourself with nothing that's in your wardrobe, which means you have to put it on. It, it didn't say you went to, went to bed with it on or you, you have it on all the time. You have to put it on. And uh, it becomes a time in our lives where we're able to be natural and also have the supernatural love in our hearts. Uh, I, I think we'll, we'll uh, be, be able to chew gum and walk at the same time if we're being led by Christ. Now, that, that, you ain't going to do that if, you, if you're walking in your, just in yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, so, but, but those are the things that God would lead us into those areas. And that's why we do Bible study. That's why we learn. Mm -hmm. That's why we discuss the sermon from Sunday so we can share our own understandings and, and grow together. Go together and grow together. Amen. Amen. So just a quick question that uh, arose um, and like a uh, First Lady was saying with tradition and Pastor Green, you often talk about tradition, about breaking tradition when we're having conversations. With that being said, do you guys, and that goes for everybody on the line, do you think that the tradition hinders us from being what God wants us to be to people who might not be Christians or people who are Christians or babies in Christ. And by us sticking to tradition all the time, do you think that becomes a hindrance to bringing people inside of the church, not just our church, but church in general? Well, I, 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 I can just say that it's, it's actually in the scripture. Uh, if you look at Colossians, the second chapter, Mm -hmm. uh, if, if somebody would pull that up, and I know we're going to transition into the message, but pull up Colossians 2 and 8. Some things we don't even have to wonder because God has already said it. Mm -hmm. he, he's made it perfectly clear how we should act around traditions. He came to fulfill the law, mm -hmm. but he was very specific about traditions. Mm -hmm. Anybody got that yet? Colossians? second chapter verse eight yes sir it says uh don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of the world right okay, hold it right there hold it right there for a second because it, over in the niv it says against philosophies and traditions so oh, i wanted 
I wanted to kind of break those words down into the words because you're probably reading out the NRT. Uh, the, uh, NLT. NLT. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Go so ahead. You want NIV? No, no, no. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where am I? At? Uh, what did I stop? Uh, human tradition. Okay. Human. And mine says human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's very specific. It says that, that beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, mm -hmm. according to the basic principles of the world, mm -hmm. and not according to Christ. Mm -hmm. So along the, the reformation of our beliefs, when you, when you go back to the theological studies, you'll find that during the times of the reformation, uh, there was a lot of construct mm -hmm. input into the church world that was that was there for uniformity, not conformity to Christ, mm -hmm. but uniformity to uh, how should I say orderly dispersion of service. You know when you stand, when you sit, how you do this, how you do that, mm -hmm. uh, whether people wear gloves, whether they don't. You know, where you and all this stuff was was put together by men. When you read the Bible, none of that existed right. in the biblical sense of where Christ has set us free. So we begin to build these, these bonds that bind us up. Mm -hmm. And it not only binds us up, but it, instead of including people, it ends up excluding people. Ah, okay. You see what I'm saying? So traditions were, were Built that way, and I'm, I'm gonna go all the way back to even the slavery times. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the slaves dressed up because it was their way of connecting with humanity that was stripped from them Monday through Saturday. So that was their way of saying, I'm just as good as anyone else by the way they dressed on Sunday. Uh -huh. So, so th there's a lot. There's a lot in there. I know we, we kind of a couple of minutes over on the reflection side, but I wanted to, to make that, to go over those scriptures because it's a great question, mm -hmm. but God has already given us an answer. Okay. Right. So when we start to think on those things ourselves, then we're, we're interjecting our own intellect into places where God has already spoken. So basically, in so many words, tradition does begin to separate people. Right. God knew that, that once we start following tradition, which means mm -hmm. we set these rules up, mm -hmm. this format up, if you break it, you know what I mean, then, you know, it, then woe on you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, versus following Christ, mm -hmm. which had nothing to do with tradition. He was, he did, every, he did, he followed the status of the culture, but when those things did not follow Christ, he didn't follow them either. Gotcha. Anything else before we transition to the lesson, y'all? Great questions. Don't want to overlook anybody's question or comment. Like we, it's like we good. Like good. Amen, amen. Well, let's go. Let let's check it out. The gift of the shepherd's presence. Amen. Somebody read Psalms twenty three verses four through six. I pray that the the word of God be healing to our to our mind, our body, and our soul. Somebody read that from anybody. Psalms twenty three verses four through six. <clears throat> Yay! So I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Amen. Amen. Very familiar Amen. scripture. Very familiar scripture. So, so let's 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 unpack, let's unpeel the onion. Let's, let's gain a greater understanding of what God is saying in his word. Amen. So there are two words we want to discuss this week that kind of have an overarching theme to God's word that we read. And those two, and those two words sound almost the same, but are spelled differently and have different meanings. Okay. One is presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E, presence. And the other one is present, P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Somebody want to share with me what the present, P-R-E-S-E-N-T, means. What, what, is, what is that describing? You said present. Like, yeah. So, so, A gift. You mean like? A gift, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you mean gift, yeah, okay. Amen. Amen. A gift. Absolutely, true. A gift. Yeah. And uh, I saw it in your text. So it also refers to something that is what? Freely given. Mm -hmm. Given from affection, friendship, interest, and respect. So that's the present. Mm -hmm. So the presence, what does that mean? P R E S E N C E. You're there. Being present. Being present. Yeah. He's yeah. Being present. You're there. It's present. It's yeah. present. Amen. You're absolutely right. Uh, trail text to be surrounded by. Amen. Uh, I'm, I'm reading your text, Trail, because some people are on the phone and they can't see the text. So it's, it's being surrounded by. Exactly. So his the presence means surrounded by. Okay of uh, being in a certain place uh, or being close to a person or a person's appearance or manner. It's like he had a presence about him. So how has the great shepherd been a present in your life? P-R-E-S-E-N-T. How has the great shepherd, we're talking about God, been a present in your life. Anybody want to share? Just uh, by granting us eternal life. Okay. I would say like always providing for us and, and looking out for us, even when like you said uh uh with it being something that we can do nothing to um to receive it. there's nothing that we can do to get it there's nothing that we can actually do to lose it but and just knowing that just always providing and always being there and always uh giving us exactly what we need even when we've done nothing giving to us receive, direction you know yeah absolutely Deborah. absolutely to everyone that spoke how has the great shepherd been a presence in your life been a gift. Protected. Yes. He protected. Protects me. Okay. All right. A protector. Yes. And also, and also giving us the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Okay. A presence. Okay. Absolutely. Gives us comfort. Yeah. Absolutely. That presence gives us confidence. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So when David wrote, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it seems first, at first, he's like striking this dark note, mm -hmm. in this beautiful song, right? But in reality, we all experience the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Not death yeah. to our human experience, maybe, mm -hmm. but there are things that die in our lives. It's not always people. So what happens is we, 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 we form this, this, this block in our mind, unless we're talking about people, then this doesn't apply. But you find how God's word is so expansive that when you look at how it was written in its context, you see that, uh, that there are things that die in our lives where we suffer loss, where we suffer loss. Friendships die, mm -hmm. finances uh -huh. die. Mm -hmm. marriages die mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Our hope is lost. Mm -hmm. Our health deteriorates. Mm -hmm. We have grief from a loss that is overwhelming and paralyzing. So when we start to look at the scope of what, of what David is talking about, he goes beyond the, the realm of most of our human thoughts when we start thinking about the valley of the shadow of death. So he previously wrote about green pastures and still waters and paths of righteousness. Then, then uh, he begins to talk about, but when following the Lord as our shepherd, we, we may still walk through what? The valley of the shadow of death. And, and there's a song, there's a song called Where He Leads Me. I'm not going to sing it, but I do want to share the words <laughs> about that song. You know what I mean? And, and the, the, <laughs> God bless. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Um, the, the words are, I can hear my Savior calling. And you sing that line three times. Mm. Then it says, take that cross and follow me. Mm. Then it says, where he leads, I will follow. They say that th three times. Then it says, I'll go with him and with him all the way. Then it says, I'll go with him through the garden. Then it says, I'll go with him, with him all the way. I'll go with him through the judgment. Mm. I'll go with him, with him all the way. And he will give me grace and glory. And go with me, with me, all the way. Did you see the shift? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The then, other, the other, the other refrains were, "I'll go with him, with him all the way." Uh -huh. But this last refrain, he says, "And go with me, mm -hmm. and with me, all the way." Now I don't know about you, but but if, if I didn't have to keep this Bible study going, I just take off running right now because there's some places that you go, or some things you go through. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. We're trying to go with Him, not realizing that He's what going with us Amen. Amen. all the way. Amen. Oh, Amen. That ought to make somebody happy to know whatever it is you're going through or going to that He's going well with you all the way Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. oh there you go i love it Deborah. say it again all the way <laughs> all the way <laughs> oh my god amen See, we don't understand the all the way because you can find very few people in your life that go all the way with you come on now come mm -hmm. on now. let's keep it amen. real there's very amen. few people and if you're honest you'll count them on one hand that you know will go well all the it's way, way. that's what you call your ride uh -huh. or die. Amen. You know what I mean? Down yep. like four Cadillac tires. <laughs> them, 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 them big tires. You understand know uh -huh. what I'm saying? You ain't got to <laughs> worry about them pulling up on you. You know what I mean? Because they're going to go if you what? All the way. Amen. Got your back. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, David used this powerful phrase, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, to, to speak of some kind of dark, fearful experience, but the phrase really kind of lacked any exactness or accuracy. It's just kind of like the valley of the shadow of death. So we want to break it down a little bit and find out what David, the implications of what David said. You know, where are the physical valleys found in the land? Anybody want to share? Where do you find physical valleys in the in land? In the mountains. Okay, the wilderness, the wilderness, valleys, the wilderness. Okay. Drought. Okay. All right. Okay. Can you be more specific about that drought? Mm -hmm. When your money Ooh. is gone and you can't go shopping. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Life is fair. Yeah. No, no, we, yeah. we're talking about the physical. Yeah, yeah right there. <laughs> <laughs> That could be a physical valley, but we're talking about the, the, the valleys where you can stand and say, ooh, that's a valley right there. I mean, the, the water where it's dry. The valley is dry. Oh, let me see a The valley is dry. Yeah, let me see a drought. Is it in yeah. the desert? 
It said, most valleys are formed by erosion of the land surface by rivers or streams over a long, uh -oh. very long period. Is, is, is yeah. that Siri? Is that Siri speaking? Is that, that, that you, Siri? <laughs> <laughs> it's Google. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, but, right. <laughs> but, but you're absolutely right. Girl. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, and, and read that, that erosion again. It said, most valleys are formed by erosion of the Ooh. land surface by mm -hmm. rivers or streams over a very long period. So you done had something run through you or through your situation that began mm -hmm. to take, take parts of it away or erode it to it, it, called, it caused a valley or depressed place in the land. I just want to kind of break that down a little bit because because that erosion and all that that's that's good that's that's that's, that's pumpkin pie if you like pumpkin if not but it, shadow or death, uh, it could also mean deep darkness yeah the, the valley okay a land that no man except the christian can pass through okay okay mm. Would you believe that valleys are the most predominant land form on the face of the earth? That's Google. Valleys are the most predominant land form on the face of the earth. Virtually every continent on the planet earth, okay? Along the sea bottoms, in the, even at the bottom of the ocean are valleys. On mm -hmm. other planets, there are valleys, okay? And there are different forms of valleys. So if we looked at it objectively, what would you say about this valley that God describes through David? It's more of a metaphor than an actual place that the one he's talking about with David in Psalm 23, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody want yeah. to kind of describe what what about this valley God describes through David in reference to the valleys that are formed in the earth? Pretty much the same, right? Yeah. So it's a really a metaphor they use this because it's representative or symbolic of what is written in Psalm 23. They're everywhere. These valleys are everywhere. They're one of the most what predominant things on this earth. Valley. <laughs> oh God. Ooh. See, our low ground has to be adjacent to something that we, we forget, the formation of the valley. So the low ground has to be adjacent to what? To be a valley. So a mountain or a hill. Ooh. No. So the low has to be right there with the what? High. The high. High. The high. So I want to kind of help people understand their valley experience because right next to your low point is what? Your high point? The high point. Yeah. Yeah. That's a shot. That's a That's shot right there. In your yeah. valley, you're not too far from the mountain. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to let that sink in for a moment because our valley makes us feel like we are far off Mm -hmm. from anything other than the state that we're in. Especially in the darkest valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're walking in the translation of the scripture, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, see, uh, it, it's a valley, not a mountaintop. You know, and, and it suggests being hedged in and what? Surrounded. Mm. And what is it surrounded by? Its presence. Now, now think about it. It's, it's a valley. But it's surrounded by, it's a low point that's surrounded by what? Hills and 
or mountains. Higher points. Mm -hmm. Higher points, right. Yes. Mm. So in the depth of your valley, all around <laughs> you is higher ground. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture. I see so the if, light. So if you look to your left and your right, you know what I mean? You're looking to a place that carries you out of the valley. Yeah. yeah, up to higher ground. I'm trying to share with you that, that this valley is not, uh, uh, how can I say, Forever. endless, huh? Say it again. Forever. Forever, yeah. When you're in the valley, a hill. huh? There's a hill not too yeah. far away from the valley. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Matter of fact, that the hill has to be right next to the valley mm. for it to right. be considered yes. a valley. Okay, and it, it, it's a it's a valley of the shadow of death. Okay, right. Not facing the substance. Look, look at the word. Okay, not the substance of death, but the shadow of death. Mm. The shadow. Okay. Yeah. Casting a shadow. When you're in the valley, you you're lacking something. Good. Yeah. 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 That that will give you a valley experience. But the, the key is, it's it's the shadow of death. All right. It, it, in the valley, the shadow of death facing what we see, David as the shadow of ultimate defeat and evil. But when we look at the translation, it says the valley of the shadow of death is possibly not the most accurate one, but it's probably more like the darkest valley. It's so, so it would read, even though I walk through the darkest valley. Okay? That's the NIV. Right. That's NLT, too. Yeah, it's the NLV, NLT, yeah. HCBS. They, they all three have that mm -hmm. translation. Mm -hmm. see, see, David recognized okay. the un... Say that again? That's it, okay. Oh, okay. See, David recognized that under the shepherd's leading, he may walk through the threat, the valley of the shadow of death. He said, yea, do I walk through. Okay. Uh -huh. It's not a destination. It's not a dwelling place. It's a place we move through. Mm -hmm. So look, there was a preacher in Ecclesiastes, David, uh, that, that, uh, that said that all my life I lived under the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. And this conscious presence of the Lord and the shepherd that makes it what? Bearable. Mm -hmm. He said, all my life mm -hmm. I lived under. But he also said that, that the presence of the Lord as his shepherd made it bearable. See, he wants to be our what? In the time of storm, mm -hmm. he wants to be our Lord and Savior in the midst of trouble. That when tr we're in trouble, trouble is not in us. And we can walk mm. through it and have confidence in it because of who we with. I know Eastside but Lil John they said, who you with? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> who you with? You know what I'm saying? That's where our trust comes in. I got a question. It's just a simple question. Sure. Didn't Jesus walk through the de the darkest valley? Just a yes well, or no. Well, <laughs> there is a valley. There is a valley he walked through physically. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is okay. the, the, the Kidron, K-I-D-R-O-N, Valley, uh, on his so way to Gethsemane. But okay. yes, he, he went through that dark place because he had to uh, take on sin mm -hmm. when he had never been sinful. Mm -hmm. And that sin right. caused a separation from the Father, was created the darkest of valley from him mm -hmm. to the point where he cried 
to the point where it like drops of blood in the garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Okay. But he also came back and said, but if thou will, that's where we have to grow into being, say, well, Lord, if this is not going to move, the only way I'm going to move through it is with you. This is what David is saying. So, so with, with Psalm 23, I know David said it at a certain point in his life. And uh, with you just saying how valleys are right next to mountains. So we're constantly in and out. We're constantly, somebody on the line might just got a victory, might just got a good job. Somebody had, on the other end of the line might have lost their house or just got a bad report. With that being said, this is a psalm that we should say on a daily basis, not just, even though David said it at a certain point in his life. I mean, you look at the world now, there's always something. There's always something. Always. Walk out your door and walk into something. You could right. yes. Yes. wake up. Yes. So it's, it seems like something that we could, we should keep in our pocket and say on a daily basis and not just mm -hmm. when, when a storm actually appears. Because everything, I mean, it happens. Everything is, the world is, is just crazy now. And, and, and you hit the nail around the head, Pastor Stanley, because one of the things that, that God led me in this study is what he led me in to reveal mm -hmm. was that this word is not a break glass moment. You ever seen those signs that break glass in time of trouble, or break glass, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's not a break glass. We got to, we got to stay behind this word. Yeah. And not mm -hmm. just not just repeat this at funerals. I mean, I'm, I'm just so sick and tired. Right. Every funeral, Old Testament scripture is the 23rd Psalm. Right. You know, I mean, I mean it, and then what we get into this tradition of only expecting a 23rd Psalm moment in our lives Absolutely. when somebody dies. Yeah. So what we do is mm. we lose the, the power and the application and the contextual application of God's word Mm -hmm. which leaves us without a rudder in the middle of the ocean. Mm. So we don't have anything to guide us. Right. You know what I mean? We're not looking for the 23rd song until we're standing before a loved one. Uh, we're not looking for a 23rd song unless we're standing beside a hospital bed. Mm -hmm. we, we, this 23rd song is a day-to-day -day application. Absolutely. Right. You know what I mean? Because this whole <laughs> life is under the shadow. Mm-hmm. Of, of death, the valley, the shower of death. And, and uh, one of the questions I had was, how does this reference describe what we experience today? You can't even go to school. No. Send your kids to school. No. Wondering if they're going to come home. Mm -hmm. Church mm, yeah. are being robbed. Yeah. People held at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to make it known that, that, that my cousins drive me to church every Sunday morning. Anyway, I ain't gonna go there. But, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, 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 it's come to that though. So that goes to show you that this is something that we need to keep in our pocket because it's come to the point. Uh, we were, to be honest with you, there was a guy who was at our church who came to assist with the audio and video, not this current time, but uh, probably about a couple of months ago. Uh, when we purchased the first piece of equipment that we were using. And he was letting us know, he said, he was letting us know what he did at his church, but he was also letting us know that in his church, there are people learning about the rights that they can have when it comes to the right to carry and conceal in the church. Mm. You know, so it's come, it's come to the point where, yeah, it's come to the point where that's needed though. To know Listen, that mm. ballots are out there now. They're everywhere. Let, let, let me oh, share wow. something with you. If, oh, if, you wow. watch, if you watch church on television, mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. those men standing at the pulpit? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yep. If you look at their hips, <laughs> they, they got a little bit of a bulge uh -huh. on mm -hmm. their hip. Yes, sir. <laughs> because can you they imagine pack. how much like money those mega churches? Can, can you imagine? Absolutely. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? I, you know, it, it, I mean, people have taken. They used to have an offering in the bulletin. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? This uh, the uh, homeland security said. Don't put your offering in the bulletin. Last week we took up five thousand dollars. 
They be like, oh, snap. <laughs> Jackpot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. While you dilly dallying out to the parking lot, going to your car. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Jackpot. You have to be wise as a serpent. Yeah. And gentle as yeah. a dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the, these, these churches have security because they got a lot of people that will jump up and want to rush the stage. Yes, sir. I mean, it, it's some stuff can go down. Pray, thank God it hasn't happened in our But they had that shooting in South Carolina. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they had a, a, a bishop that was robbed during the service while he was preaching. That's right. What? Oh, God. Yeah. They came in and told him to lay down. It was on TV. Mm -hmm. they, they had him lay down on the podium, took his jury, took his... Anyway, I mean, I'm just oh, saying, God. we live in the valley of the shadow of death. Absolutely. We ain't got to wait. We ain't got to wait for no particular time. But mm. these are things that God has allowed. I'm going to say this again. These are things that God has allowed mm -hmm. the shadow to loom. So what God is showing us is that these earthly places are not safe. Mm -hmm. But there is a cleft. Oh, glory to God. Oh. There is a cliff in the rock <laughs> where we can find a refuge. Okay? Mm. There is a place of safety in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Amen. so these other places are not supposed to make us feel safe. Mm -hmm. But there's one place where we're guaranteed to feel safe. That's in Christ Jesus. Right. Psalm 46 and 1 says, God is what? Our refuge. Our mm -hmm. refuge. And what? Strength. Yeah. A very yeah. present help. Present help. In time of yeah. You know, yeah. yes. a couple of weeks ago, we were, um, we were defining this word fortress. Because in, in the Psalms, it speaks about uh, the fortress. And there was a man-made fortress that had been built around David. And God says he's the only fortress because even that wall, even that castle, even that watchtower can be blown down, can be destroyed. Because that fortress was built by hands for, from a man, for a man. Mm -hmm. But the fortress that protects us is a fortress that hasn't been made by the hands of man. So it can't be. Destroyed. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So so we can we can when we look at the shadow, mm. okay. When we look at the shadow, we understand that the shadow is not a tangible thing, right? Right. But right. It's, right. But it's cast by something that is. Mm. So what causes a shadow is the tangible thing, or the solid thing. Okay, so we understand that the shadow is not what we should be afraid of. Right. So we understand that, that that shadow is cast. We can rightly say that we face the shadow of death only because Jesus took the what full reality of death in our place. So even if you were talking about a physical death. Death has been swallowed up in victory mm. when our bodies are transformed. Amen. Okay. So, so that, that, that in itself, when you look at 1 Corinthians 15, 54, even in NLT, it says, then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is what? Swallowed up mm. in what? Victory. Okay, so which shadow should we be focused on? The shadow of death or the shadow of the Almighty? Shadow of the Almighty. Shadow of the Almighty. 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 We can dwell under good. the what? Shadow of what? Or the Almighty. Right? Almighty. In this what? Secret place. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when we look at when we look at the song. It, it, it shouldn't be, when we think about the valley, we got to shift our thinking. It should be a woke moment, but it should be a woke 
moment. Mm. Okay. So why do we think some politicians demonize being woke, huh? But glorify being unconscious, not being asleep, but not being conscious, not being aware, not being awake. The enemy would be the love us to not know the true sense of what God is saying. He don't care nothing about you reading your Bible. He don't care nothing about you reading going to church. Just don't understand what you're going for. Just, wow. just don't understand what you're reading. Just don't understand what you're singing. He'll let you sing it with you if you want him to. But just <laughs> don't don't find safety, protection, confidence, and strength in it. Because now he's defeated. Mm. Okay. So no, they don't want you woke. They want you to keep sleeping. Mm -hmm. No, they don't want you awake. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, uh, read it at a funeral. That's that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. But don't get up in the morning and say, I'm about to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And guess what? I will feel what? No evil, because no God evil. is with me. I don't with care about me. my boss. I don't care about my husband. I don't care about my wife. I don't care about these nappy head children. I don't care about nothing, because <laughs> God is. God is. You're trusting, with me. You're trusting I, I'm, in I'm him. I'm trying to keep it real. I'm yeah. trying to keep it real. Now, you wake yeah. up some morning, even your children have got on your lap. Yeah. I'm just being yes. with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That we have to understand this valley is a place that shows up everywhere. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. But fear should not show up in the valley. Yeah. Man. Okay. You know, when it when it comes to the way you just explained this, uh the valleys and the mountains, it's kind of like God has given us inside information on what to expect. You know, that we some people go to psychics to see what next month is going to look like or, you know, check the burn, whatever they burn to see what it, what's going to be next. But you get an inside information from God to know that even if you are in a hole, it's right next to a valley. If you're on the top of the mountain, there's a there's a, a hole coming, there's a valley coming. So he's given his children inside information. He's given us the blueprint. To let us know, you know, that, yeah, celebrate now because there's a valley coming. I'm often uh, brought back to the thought of uh, when David fought Goliath and, you know, all the victory that came along with that. He fought Goliath and he got the victory in that. But a couple of chapters further, there was another battle that David had to face. So it's like, yeah, you got the victory there, but two chapters ahead, here's another fight that you got on your hands you yeah. know yeah i mean I, i'm unemployed i gotta find a job lord help me find a job then we dance and victory is mine <laughs> i got the job then they said no my boss is so they pissed me off i can't right? stand him i don't know what the... <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then friday come oh it's payday it's right? payday <laughs> we just in and out i'm just saying yeah you know, but when we talk about the shepherd, the shepherd we had to carry the sheep, lead the sheep mm -hmm. across rugged terrain mm -hmm. to find the green pastures. For, wow. So for those that were yeah. here, we were talking about the green pastures. Mm -hmm. You could not get to the green pastures without going through those rocky terrains. Yeah. Right. Even Amen. to the point hey. when, he, when he got them to the green pastures. Is where he would anoint their head with oil. Mm. <laughs> where he would he would minister to them and heal their wounds that they accumulated mm. when they went through the terrain in order to get to the green pastures. So you couldn't have one it without the green. other. You can't get to it without yeah. the other. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he makes me lie down in green pastures like like abracadabra, green right. pastor just fall at your feet. <laughs> now you're gonna go through some stuff, right? <laughs> in order to get to that green pastor. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about celebrate celebrating victories and battles, but the, the shortest war I ever heard of was the Seven Day War with Israel and, and the Palestinians, mm -hmm. and that that was a fluke because of what God did. But wars last years, and yeah. you get to celebrate battles, but the, I war not over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Very true. Very true. I mean, you, you yeah. have to go through 
some things. To get to some things. Amen. That's why the shepherd Amen. leads you through, you know, those things. I mean, can, can a shadow of a dog bite you? No. 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 Can a, a, a shadow of a sword kill you? No. No. Okay. Can the shadow of death destroy you? No. 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 So as we walk through this shadow experience, we can say, I will what? Fear no evil. Yeah. Yeah. Not be running around here scared of shadows. Oh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a ghost in my house. I just seen a shadow. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so, Pastor Green, quick, quick question. Uh, when, when, when we think about the shadow and we said the shadow can't hurt us, what about the thought of these things? The thought of something coming to hurt us, the thought of uh, COVID taking you out because you didn't wear your mask or so whatever. Let's just say the thought of this happening because you see a lot of people uh, reacting now off of the thought of what could and couldn't happen. What do you do with that? What do you do with the thought? Well, we have to bring uh, our, our thoughts into what? Captivity. Objection. All right, there you go. Objection. There you go. Bring it into captivity of what? Of God. The word. Yeah, oh, that God is. He still promised God. So somebody find that scripture for me while we talk, because you have to bring it into captivity. The, the six inches. Now I may have eight because I got a big head, <laughs> but the six inches between your ears mm -hmm. is one of the most dangerous places that you ever come into. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's your mind. Mm -hmm. The Bible even talks about go, go ahead. It's second Corinthians 10 and 5. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does it say? Wait a minute. I gotta, oh, you know, I have to Google first. Okay, no, no worries. No go, worries. girl. <laughs> but 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 that's six inches between your brain to between mm -hmm. your ears is a dangerous place. Amen. So if somebody's playing with your mind, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That, that's, that, that's, that, that's a dangerous thing because then your, your thoughts take over. Your instinct takes over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your, your, your interpretation of events and words. You know, that, that's why sometimes you have to go to people and explain what it was you said. Mm -hmm. because what they heard might have been something different because the prince of the power of the what? Air, okay, took those words that you spoke and when they went into somebody's ear, mm -hmm. their thoughts began to translate those words. Ah. So that's why you end up telling people, well, that's what, what I meant. That's not what I said, mm -hmm. but that's what they heard. Absolutely. And, and that, that was the reason I asked that question, because uh, if you think about it, a lot of people respond out of what they thought or how they felt about it. And, you know, off of that, I mean, think about it. When they told us that we were running out of tissue, toilet tissue, people were losing their mind, going inside the store and grind, buying the biggest thing of toilet tissue they can get. Like, that ain't going to save you if, you know, if this thing is bad as this is going to be. But just the thought mm -hmm. that we were, before COVID, we were able to go in and you purchase, if you wanted to purchase 12 rows, you purchase 12. If you want to purchase 24, you purchase 24. But just the thought, oh Lord, we ain't gonna have no more tissue, sent people into hysteria. Well, the Satan sends thought. us into a panic all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Elder Rush, you got that scripture? Yes, it says, uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing Mm -hmm. that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yes. Amen. 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 So, so Amen. even in a fearful place, mm -hmm. the presence of the shepherd should banish the fear of evil. Could you imagine how God feels that, that we know he's with us, but we scared <laughs> He, we know he's with us, 
but but we trim the whole oh, Lord, I don't know what's gonna happen. You're talking to God, he's right there with you. What do you think is gonna happen? He's right there with you. Amen. Is your confidence in him? Or do you consider whatever your, whatever your circumstance mm -hmm. has the ability to overpower God and do something that God never intended to happen? Mm. He promised Hebrews 13, 5. Right. So so when we when we say it's it's like it's like going 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 to the school with your dad with a bullet, then the bullet show up and you run and leave your dad like you think he, dad ain't he, he ain't gonna be the handle this. I'm gonna have to run. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> How are you gonna show up with God in your situation and still be fearful of the situation? Mm. Or just God is facing something that he can't handle. Mm. So, so, what, so what are we saying about God if we're fearful in the valley, in the presence of the Almighty? The presence, he's there. See, we're his not trusting God. Yeah. His presence does not eliminate the presence of evil. Mm -hmm. He allows evil to be in the same place, but it should eliminate the fear of evil because all things are subject unto God. That's why he's called the almighty. The definition means he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. Nothing exists that is more powerful than God. In other words, you can feel. And, yeah. and, and if God be for you, <laughs> yes. he will be against, he'll be against yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. That's what that scripture means. And people don't really yeah. understand that. Yeah. I mean, we got to get tattoos or something. We got to get something <laughs> that's going to give us God's word. Yeah, remind us. Yeah. And, 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 and make it real to us mm -hmm. that I can stare in the face of a fool mm -hmm. and know that God. Got my back. It's right there. Yep. You know what I mean? The, I ain't got to be the one to cuss you out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because God got my back. Amen. You know what I mean? It's like, hold up, God. I'll be back in a minute. Let me handle this here right here, right here, right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if God has not given us the fear, who, who gave us fear? If God has not given us the spirit fear, who, who did give it to us? The devil, man. Yeah. Right. He didn't give it to us. So, 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 with that being said, um, you said something um, in your conversation just a second ago about the prince of the prince the who controls, right? The power to air. Uh, so, can you unpack that? Like when you, like I've heard that term used before. Um, but can you explain when you said the power of the air? But he gave him he gave him some delegated powers in the earth, mm -hmm. and he was called the prince of the power air, the prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because where he was allowed to operate in this this uh, how should I say this atmosphere? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where he moves from place to place in the air, but at the same time he doesn't have any powers beyond that which has been delegated. Right. The example was Job. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Uh, uh, the Lord introduced the idea of Job mm -hmm. to Satan. Yeah. Absolutely. And Satan said, I, you know, you got a hedge around. It. I've been going to and fro in the earth, mm -hmm. which means I've been passing by Job all this time. Because right. you got a hedge around. He's mm -hmm. removed the hedge. And let's see how Job fares. Mm. So he removed the heads, but he said, don't touch this. Mm. Then he said, don't mm -hmm. touch that. So, so whatever you're under attack with, uh, I, I preached a sermon one time that the, 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 the enemy has restrictions. Mm -hmm. He has a, a restricted zone where he cannot attack you. Mm. He only can do what God allows him to do. Exactly. Because David turned around and said, for what? I don't feel because you are with me. Mm. Lord, if you with me, why am I afraid? Your presence mm -hmm. is with me. Because in your presence, 
I know as a shepherd, your rod and your staff will comfort me. That means the thing that leads and guides me and the thing that protects me is where I should find comfort in knowing that all of that is in your hand, your rod and your staff, even your rod of correction. See, sometimes we don't want to be corrected, but that correction is what saves us. Amen. Amen. You know, so he had he had to find confidence in the fact that God was right there. Then he turned around and said, you, you prepare what? A table a before table me. Before me. In the in presence the of my enemies. Presence. Of my enemies. Yeah. And my question is, what you going to do when, 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 when the beast and the blessing show up at the same time? because <laughs> he prepared a table before me see when the shepherd would go out and find the green pastures he would go out and he would try to remove those things that are in the pasture that could harm the sheep so one of the reasons why he stayed at, uh, in front of the sheep and in front of the sheep fold where he would keep the sheep laying it's because the enemy or the predators were right there. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about those lions and those things, they would actually get up on a hill and they would just sit there and perch. Mm -hmm. Watch. Mm -hmm. Watch See, too many of us get scared when we hear the when we hear the enemy growling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we, we're afraid of the shadow of it. The growl. But David knew that the Lord was what? With him. With him. With him. Promise yeah. to be with us. The enemy in the presence, God's presence is also in the presence mm. of my enemies. Okay? So he prepared that table. He, he, he prepared a place that was safe, protected, even though the enemy was right there. Uh, he says, yeah, go ahead. Now, yeah, I think a couple of weeks ago we were discussing about that table. Can can mm -hmm. you unpack that table, what that table means to the sheep? Well, well the table was that area where the, the, the food was prepared. Mm -hmm. So it's a metaphor of that green grass area mm -hmm. of the good grass mm -hmm. you know what i mean so when you when you if you were a shepherd and you were in this region mm -hmm. you knew where the good grass was because you've been there before mm -hmm. so you would let the sheep eat the grass then you would have to move from that green pasture to another one because they're going to starve if they keep eating in an area where there's no food mm -hmm. it's like getting your grass cut when they eat all the grass down <clears throat> They can't continue to stay there because now they've eaten away their provision. Mm. So now he's got to lead them to another area. But he left that area already, what, prepared. So all they had to do was grow back. So when he made that circle of that, of that uh, journey back through that area, the table would be spread all over again. So as you journey through life, you keep running into these tables that God has already spread for you. These areas of abundance. Mm -hmm. When you've gone through the rocky areas and you've gotten to this area where provision lies for you. Mm -hmm. So that table, those tables, especially in a mountainous area mm -hmm. where those flat surfaces of land where the, the sheep would actually graze. Mm. <clears throat> so you're looking at a table as in an area of land. And for us, a table as in God's provision for us. Absolutely. God set the table. Mm -hmm. He prepared the table in the presence of your enemies. Amen. Which, with us, which assures us if the enemy could stop it, he would. But obviously he can't. So we can graze and eat, even if the enemy is laying there growling. 
So sometimes you have to look at your situation and say, keep on growling while I keep on eating. <laughs> I'm going to eat and you're going to growl. Yes, you're going to growl and I'm going to eat. Amen. Because the shepherd is my shield and my buckler. The shepherd is my very present help in trouble. The shepherd, it will protect me even in the shadow of anything that can show up in my life. Then he says, you anoint my head with oil. And you remember what I said, that the, the, the reason why they would anoint the sheep's head with, with oil? Mm -hmm. it, Anybody remember? Treat, to treat the wounds? To treat the wounds, yes. Yes. You know, we, we're talking about we can we can look at it spiritually as the anointing, mm -hmm. but we can also look at it in the metaphor when he was talking about he would he would treat the oil with would form a treatment for the parasites that the sheep got on the journey, for the cuts and the bruises that the sheep got on the journey. So he would wait until he got to these green pastures to treat the wounds of the, the sheep that they accumulated in their journey. So God's got a place where he can feed you and heal you for the wounds that you accumulate in life travels. And then he'll fill you up to what? Your cup runs what? Yeah, it's over. 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 An overflow. An overflow. overflow. So he blesses us in the presence of our enemies. And you wonder why some people don't like you. They're looking at your overflow. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you're living in the overflow, you're going to have people that ain't going to like you. They ain't gonna like you because you're living in the overflow. They're gonna talk about you, look at them. That's because you're in the overflow. They're gonna look at you, it don't take all that. That's because you're in the overflow. <clears throat> so he goes on down, he says, Surely. Anybody walking with me in the surely? Yes. Surely. Yeah. Surely. Amen. Amen. Surely. Amen. I, I mean, it, it, it ain't nothing else to talk about. Surely. I don't care where surely. you are in, in your journey. Surely. I don't care what who said, what said, what happened. Surely. Mm -hmm. Surely goodness and mercy. You know, not just some days, but all the days. And when I read the scripture and I started understanding from reading the commentaries that he said this thing is going to all the days of our life. And then we're going to dwell in the house. That means not even in this life, but in the afterlife. Afterlife. <laughs> Because I will what? Dwell in the house of the Lord the what? forever. Forever. Amen. So the care that brought the goodness and mercy to us is going to be with us forever. Mm. You know, we read the scripture now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly <laughs> above all that we can ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us, unto Him be glory in the in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations. But when we sit down and start believing that word, that we take the limits off of God. So what? Well, so so with this is when, when people I understand that people um, that us we we have our human. Um, when it comes to that, when you see more people that are 
shaken up by the things that happen in the world. And like I said, you know, people are human. You understand people are human. Is is the reaction saying that there is a lack of understanding what the scriptures tell us? Because the scripture, that's just what we're reading, two, three, four tonight or two, three, six. Just, just those few scriptures have given us the blueprint, what to expect. It's going to be up. It's going to be down. It's going to be a shadow. It's not going to be the real thing. We're going to be covered by the Lord. But if we wake up tomorrow morning and they have something on the news saying there's a new virus and we, we can't go outside or we can't do the things that we used to do, the fear that comes from that, the thought that comes from that, is that a lack of us not sitting down and actually digging in this word to find out that whatever comes, whatever happens, God has us covered? Is, is that on our part to begin to dig in this word and find out exactly what it says about protection, provision. I, I think I think part of it is we have to, like the Bible says, study to show that self approved. Yes, sir. But we have to make it application. Uh-huh. It's got to be an application. I'm gonna tell you, I, I got I got a bottle of frankincense and myrrh. This yes, is sir. a bottle of oil. You can see it's in a box, right? Mm-hmm. But I know it's in here. Okay, I, 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 I can hear it rattling around. Mm-hmm. I know it's there, but if I don't open this box, mm-hmm. and if I don't open the bottle, mm-hmm. and if I don't take some and put it on my hand, mm-hmm. and if I don't apply it to what the surface that that needs the attention, mm-hmm. okay, what good is it? So I go back to what I said earlier: the devil ain't upset when you come to church. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can read the Bible. He ain't where he'll read with you. He wants to swap verses with him. You know, read you read one, he'll read one too. You can read all night if you want to. You know what I mean? But what he doesn't want you to be is woke. He don't want you to wake up and apply this word mm-hmm. to your life. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, there was a saying a pastor used to say, he said, take this word. Mix it with faith and mm-hmm. apply it to your life. It, it'll work. Wow. Yes. Yeah. You can have all the medicine in the medicine cabinet you want to, but if you don't take it, mm-hmm. if you don't apply it properly to your situation, you're going to be asleep. Mm-hmm. And, and, I'll, and I'll use some famous words that we know and should be well known by now. Trust God. Trust him. Trust him. Yeah, trust him. You know what I mean? Apply it to your life. It's supposed to work. It's the infallible word of God. Mm. That means there's no faults in it. It's infallible. Okay? The word of God is alive. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Any two-edged sword. Amen. To dividing of what? Soul and spirit. You get a spirit on you, that word is supposed to come in and divide Mm. and free you from that spirit because it's a lie. I tell my kids all the time. That's what I tell my kids all the time. Trust in them. It ain't like he don't know what he's doing because he do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I can see the enemy, trust him. I can hear him growl, trust him. Trust him. Yeah. They don't think me, trust him. Because the the enemy is just trying to instill fear all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Trust God, you're going to succumb to it. Mm. Uh, You have to. And you'll get on a swivel. And and he puts out lies, which brings fear. Oh, yeah. So we have to watch what we, we, receive in our spirit we cannot come in agreement with that stuff we hear yeah yeah there's only thing we should agree with and that's the word of god amen so, hallelujah so not not to take up, not to take up a whole lot of time um with, with my question but the question um with that being said should we be very particular about what we allow in front of our eye gate and our ear gate? Like, it seems to be that 
particular that we got to be mindful of what we uh, put ourselves in or listen to or see or watch or hear. Well, you have to understand that, that, that you, you can be entertained, mm -hmm. but you don't have to entertain everything that's entertaining you. Okay. Okay. Yes. You know, that it used to be a thing back in the day. You go in the movie, you go to the movies, you're going to hell. Right. That's a tradition. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Movies don't or jump you off watch the screen. Well, I mean, I I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. God is more powerful than any of that. We ought to be led by Amen. God. Right. Not by your TV guy. Mm -hmm. Led by God. I mean, think on those things before you... It, 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 it's some things that you know you ain't ready for. We just talked about big meat and and uh, and milk earlier. You know, I, I want to teach a lesson on demonology. How are you going to teach a lesson on demonology and you riddle with demons yourself? <laughs> well, you going to talk about how demons are... Uh, help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying you, we have to be we have to be mindful mm -hmm. of those things. You know what I mean? That, that we are ready for and that we don't prepare ourselves. God prepares us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that we can open ourselves up for confliction and confusion. And at the very least, confuse others at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was confused. That, that makes sense? Yeah, I'm, it, I'm just saying. I mean, in, any questions or comments that that concludes? I'm a, little, I'm a few minutes over, but I, I didn't want to leave anybody hanging. Great comments by everybody, but but we have to we have to follow Christ. You know what I mean? We have to follow Christ and and know that Christ is in it. You know what I mean? In anything and everything we do. Does that mean everything we do? Well, I would say everything. We should be praying. We should be prayerful. Mm -hmm. about our situations you know there's some things that come on the tv i turn the channel i mean i'm like man this ain't you know i, I i'm just not entertained by it mm -hmm. you know what i mean it, it, i can laugh at some of the craziest things and it, it not and not entertain it mm -hmm. but in, be entertained by it because i know the god i serve right Amen. i know foolishness when i see it Amen. Amen. You know what I mean? Being confident in the God I serve, you know, but but you know I I can't ascribe. Everybody's in, a, in their own place in Christ Jesus. Say what now? I'm just thankful that I have the Lord as my shepherd. Yeah, bottom the Lord line is my shepherd. perfect comment, Linda. The Lord is my shepherd. Let Him lead you. Listen to him. Provide that time and space to hear him. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to tell you one of the things that I enjoy, and uh, and I, I see uh, Terrell is still on, but I know Tiffany was on. But when I see those young people in our church posting scriptures, do y'all on the posting scriptures because they're being what led by God? Mm -hmm. They're what? Looking at God's word and applying it to their life. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. the enemy pissed off at Bernie Bush. He, let me tell you something. It's no reason for the enemy to be glad about Bernie Bush. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's what we got to do is we got to gird ourselves. Because it's coming. Oh, yeah. There can't be a great, what, a victory without the persecution, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So somebody can say, they, they post the scriptures, but they probably ain't, but stay, stay in your lane. I, I got another <laughs> word, mind your business. <laughs> Amen. Leave the folk alone, yeah. you know what I mean? Because whatever Christ they're getting, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He's making the changes because it's an inside job. That's right. Amen. But when you Amen. start to see that, when you start to see that, that's a beautiful thing. And when we start to see people loving on one another, when you start to see the congregation spending minutes and minutes and minutes after service, just congregating and talking 
with one another, not talking about each other. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know what I mean? So we have to understand what, what really upsets the enemy. But we have a God that's going to, it's just a shadow, right? That's going to lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. Anything else, guys? I'm, I'm way over, but I didn't want to just drop the line. All hearts and minds clear. Did everybody enjoy the study on Psalm 23? Amen. 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 Well, well I, what I encourage you to do is study it on your own. Choose your favorite psalm and go, go, go dive in deeper. Go deeper. You know what I mean? Find out what, what God is trying to say in this scripture that we've been reading over and over again. You know, in our in our spare time, but have we really went beyond the surface to find out what God is saying to us? What God is saying to us through the Word. Amen. 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 That be all. Is that all, guys? If, if it is, let's close it on out. Thank everyone for attending. Thank everyone for your participation. You know what I mean. I, I bless God for you all. Um, for all those that are on, it's been a it's been a joy. I got kind of excited earlier. I think the word of God just it just does something to me. Uh, so so pray for pray for the pastor, all right? <laughs> Don't <laughs> do <it> like that. <laughs> pray for pray pray for pray for his mind. <laughs> oh glory! I got I got to keep it real, y'all. Got to keep it real. If that be all, close this on out. Jeanette, take us home. Ready? Yeah. Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. My mouth. The words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation. And, and meditation of my, of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable, Be acceptable in, thy in thy sight. O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my, o Lord, my, strength. my strength. strength. And my redeemer. And my and redeemer. My redeemer. redeemer. Amen. Amen, y'all. God bless you. Amen. Good night. 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 Good